There's only two things in my TikTok for you page. Jesus Christ on Skate 3 and Haley Williams' performances live. That's pretty much it. So I was really excited for this new Primer album and it finally came out. This is why it's the first full-length release by Paramore since 2017's album After Laughter. There has been pretty divisive opinions about this new album that came out. Um, some people say it's a very weak and bland and uninspired album, and other people think this is Paramore's best project so far. So what I'm gonna do now is review this record track by track and see in which side of the spectrum I end up landing on. So yeah, let's get into it. We start with a pretty energetic banger called This Is Why, you know, as a record. And it's one of the singles that introduced us to the album before it even came out. So it sets some expectations about what this record is going to sound like and feel like. I love this song a lot. It's still one of my favorites at the moment. And it's just the best way to start this album, you know, setting a standard and a statement of what this album is going to sound like. You know, it's very bombastic, very enjoyable. And it's just a really cool and fun way to start an album. The news is the second track of the record, and it was also one of the singles, so we're still in pretty familiar ground. This one takes more of a bombastic route, even more than the first one, with Haley Williams screaming this catchy chorus, you know, with a very repetitive vibe. But it's one of those cases where you want the song to be repetitive because you really enjoy it a lot and it's addicting, so there's really no problem there. It's powerful, Haley's voice is crazy in this one, and so far, really nothing to complain about. Not that I'm looking for flaws or anything. Running out of time, though, remains more on the melodic side of the album, with more of a sweet delivery and, you know, a few surprises by Haley. But for the most part, it directs the vibe into a more from like, um, and less exciting route that still tries to pursue this energetic vibe from previous songs. I don't particularly rate this one, but it still has this playful appeal to it that at times is very refreshing in records like this. And honestly, it's starting to grow on me the more I listen to it, so I guess that's a good thing. Sakam Sa is also one of the singles, and I think it's a song that is mostly just fun. You can tell it's more of a sing-along track with a few top pieces, kind of like dry cleaning style, so sort of derivative from like the new post-punk stuff we've been listening to recently. But then it quickly shifts into this repetitive chorus with the second sa lyrics. It was really cool for a bit, but I can't lie, listening to the second sa thing all over again, it's just kind of tiring. At least for me, it was like really fun at first, but then it just gets old very quickly. Doesn't mean it's a bad track, I just think it's very exhausting to listen to times. I found it funny how Rolling Stone magazine sort of described this album as an excellent foray into post-punk, when this record barely feels like post-punk, and the only track you might make an argument for that is this one song, but it even barely feels like that. This next track though, called Big Man Little Dignity, is a bit of a break for the previous tracks, starting with this very sweet melody and relaxing guitar and some pretty cool vocals going more into the pop side of this album. The genre that starts to be prioritized even more than the classic pop punk that we know par more by. This is more inspired into the classical contemporary pop that is always gonna be catchy and just will never get old. So it's a really great track. The next track is called You First and it really shines on its production. You can tell the trio really just went more explorative with the song. It feels like a Paramore song still, you know? It has this staple and like branding all over it. You know, maintaining the guitar riffs, the cool drums and the catchy chorus. But all of that shines in front of this like bedroom pop style of production, which is not common in this type of albums. So that was really exciting to listen to. And of course, we can forget about this punk style riffs and the beautiful vocal delivery by Helen Williams. Figure 8 starts with this sort of ward piano, like Asian type style harp, I'm, I'm not sure, but it truly really changes the dynamic of the record, but then it quickly shifts back into the expected guitar and drums and everything else we already know. The only thing I could really say is that you can tell how they really want to try something different, but as soon as you recognize some like free exploration of rhythm, or production it quickly fits away into what Paramore is comfortable with. It could be more risky because you can tell they really want to implement new stuff. They just never really let that be the main focus of any of their songs. 
Does this mean this is a bad track? Not at all. I mean, it's still a banger. It's explosive. It's exciting anyways. And that's really all you want in a Paramore record. It just kind of like bothers me how some people are describing this as an evolution in maturity and style with really... There's really not that much of a change from previous albums. Then we jump to Liar, which throws a complete 180 into the record. It's more of a melodic ballad, where the vocals truly shine more than anything else. A very necessary track for the record is more focused on its message and its lyrics, keeping a low-key guitar and forgetting about the drums, becoming more of a secondary complement, that eventually appears but it slowly fades away again. It's beautiful, easy to get lost in, and as I said before, it's a must track for completing this album. Crave also starts with this more sweet and soft melodics more than the previous tracks. It has this bedroom pop style, again, type of like production and rhythm, but manages to feel less DIY and even more polished. So it's cool how they decide to sort of keep this clean sound that is so common in general pop songs, but bring back that catchy bedroom pop rhythmic step defined the past couple of years. Thick is Cool is the last track of the album and it quickly reminds you to some Fiona Apple. I think some songs of this album do have that like Fiona Apple style, but none of them as much as this one. The contrast between the bright vocals and dark rhythm brings a very interesting duality to the track, making it feel layered and full of life, and it's just a great way to finish the record. While this album shines in vocal delivery and a new approach to pop music as a whole, and while Hayley Williams is still one of my favorite artists out there, bringing back memories and nostalgia back once more, something that always happens every time a new Paramore album comes out, I still don't fully buy the praise on how explorative and innovative it is, but as an alternative album, it's extremely fun and cohesive, lyrically great, and with a very interesting balance in production between being polished and being dirty. Fun, playful, and bombastic, that sometimes allows itself to be more personal and full of identity, but I don't think this is their best work. But I understand why some people think it is. If anything, this is still a great Paramore album, and should be appreciated without having to be compared with their previous projects and just let it shine on its own, right? Because it's still pretty awesome. I wish I liked it as much as some other people did that gave it like a 10 out of 10, but I just didn't. But anyways, after all that, I'll give this album three stars out of five, which may seem low for some, but trust me, three means a lot to me and it is a good album. And I guess that's it for today. If you like this video, you can subscribe to my channel, maybe leave a like, leave a comment, and you know, maybe just leave your opinion about the album. Do you liked it? Do you hated it? I don't know, let me know. Goodbye. Ready for the mosh pit, Shaka bra.